a press conference, if you, not, um, not a reporter, if you guys want to stand along the building, that would be great. If you're with press, if you want to be where the cars are, that would be great. Hi, nice to meet you. joining us. We have a bustling crowd and we're here to end the 24 hour work day. Woo! I, a woman campaign press conference to end the 24 hour work day for home care workers. The campaign sponsors are the following organizations. Disability Education and Advocacy Network of Western New York, Chinese Staff and Workers Association, National Mobilization Against Sweatshops, Flushing Workers Center, National Organization for Women, New York State Chapter, and the New York City Democratic Socialists of America Socialist Feminist Chapter. Thank you all so much for being here today. The Anti-Woman Campaign has been going on for about two decades now led by working women. And we're here to say that we deserve fair hours, we deserve time for ourselves, time for our families, and we're here to end the 24-hour day for home care workers. We want to thank all the legislators for coming out who are supporting the bill, and we'll talk a little more about that in just a moment here. Um, so a century after the tragic death of women garment workers toiling long hours, trapped here in the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory, we are standing here today not only to remember those women whose lives were lost, but to fight for ourselves and working women today who are working 24-hour workdays, multiple days in a row. It has to end! So we are here today, home care workers, people who rely on home care, families, elected representatives, and concerned New Yorkers who care about the lives of women and immigrants, we're here to announce the introduction of new state legislation to end these 24-hour workdays for home care workers and to end a shameful, unconscionable abuse of these caregivers that should never have happened in the first place. The bill is saying no more sweatshops, no more 24-hour workday. And my name is Mary Lister. I'm a home care worker and organizer with the Anti-Woman Campaign. I have the pleasure of introducing May Come True, another home attendant who's been helping to lead the fight against the 24-hour workday. Let's hear it. Um, so she say, uh, my name is uh, May Come True. I have been work, uh, 20, um, home care worker at CBC more than 10 years. Uh, I've been working like 24 hour shift for more than five years because the work for care of the, of the patient is really a lot and heavy. I work continu continuously 24 hour for three, four days per week. All my energy is spent on the patient. I wake up three, four times a night to take care of the patient. So I have no way to rest regularly. So the one time I was uh, helping the patient to use the bathroom. In order to not let the patient fall down, I injure my shoulder. I cannot work anymore. So, and I become a disabled person. But uh, so uh, today, so the legislature proposal uh, speak the voice of us, home care worker. So we must abolish the 24 hour work day. Because this is an inhumane working environment that treats this industry worker, especially the woman, like the slave. So, the home care worker have a lot of responsibility and pressure, so she taking care of the patient day and night, so work like a slave. So uh, um, she say uh, we uh, we also the home care worker also have a family, a children, so every day taking uh, taking a lot of pressure. So we demand the government pass this legislature legislation uh, pass this law to protect the worker and uh, protect the patient. So, no more 24-hour shift. At least it's spread to two shifts. And she, uh, we, we demand the government to do that. Thanks.
So as we heard, these 24-hour workdays are making patients out of workers. When we work these long hours, we're getting injured. It needs to end. So on that note, I want to introduce two of our sponsors. We're going to start out with Senator Roxanne Persaud. Thank you so much for coming. hours is too long. That's, right. That's what we're saying today. 24 hours is inhumane. No one should be working 24 hours without a break. It is unhealthy. It is unhealthy for the worker and it's unhealthy for the patient. It is a safety hazard and we have got to stop that. Assembly member Harvey and I that's what we're going to be doing. That's right. We are going to be fighting hard come the new legislative session with all of my colleagues to ensure that a 24 hour work day for you workers is not going to continue. Is that what we want? Yeah. Is that what we really want? So as Senator Roxanne Persaud pointed out, these 24 hour work days do not work for any of us. We've got home care workers out here whose families have been torn apart, health has been torn apart. So thank you so much for talking about that bill, which in the Senate is S, S, S I'm sorry, which in the Senate is S6640. We're gonna have a quick translation and then Assembly Member Harvey Epstein. Good morning everyone. Good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning everyone. Good morning. So we're all here because we know there's a problem. We know there's a problem in healthcare. We see workers every day struggling. We see patients struggling as well. Someone who's working 24 hours isn't taking care of themselves. If they can't take care of their own health, their own physical health, their own mental health, how are they gonna take care of someone else? And we're saying not only do you want to work 24 hours, but we're only paying you for 13 out of the 24 hours. This is a social justice issue. It's an economic justice issue. Workers are being paid on average $25,000 a year. And we know in a city like New York, that is not a living wage. That is not something that's sustainable. So we're here to say, one, let's abolish the 24 hour rule. Let's do that. And let's support workers. Workers from organizations all over the city. You know, AI and women organizing on this issue. There are organizations, Chinese staff and workers, National Mobilization of Sweatshop, saying that their members are seeing this struggle every day. Now we realize that patient care is important, and this is not saying we don't care about patients. We're not sacrificing patient care at all. What we're saying is we're improving patient care by ensuring workers have living wages, livable wages, livable hours, and that's our goal. So the bottom line, we know this costs money. This is costs money. The government has to step up. And we're lucky we have strong leadership in our Senate. We have my assembly colleagues here. We're going to speak in a few minutes. Deborah Gleck, Joanne Simon, David Weprin, Natalia Fernandez, who are here standing with us saying, we know this is a priority. We know this is a social justice issue. And we know we need to spend money to make this work. And that's exactly what we're going to do when we run into the next legislative session. Stay involved. Keep being involved. Push us to get this done. Thank you all for being Thank here. Once again, that's Assembly Bill 08064, Senate Bill S6640. We're going to be ending the 24 hour workday and capping work hours at 50 hours per week. Safer for the workers, safer for our patients. So, next, I would like to introduce Assembly Member, Assembly Member Deborah Glick. Good morning everyone, thank you so much for being here. And I want to thank my the sponsors of the bill, Senator Prasad and Assemblymember Epstein and Senator Myrie and Hoyleman. It is important for all of us to stand together. I thank all of the advocates. Who is who are the patients? They're elderly, they're ill, they're disabled. Who are the workers? Generally, it is women who are forced, you know, forced to work in human hours, not benefiting either themselves, their families, or the patients when they have to work 24 hours. This is vital that we stop this inhumane hour, 24-hour workday. 
and we are going to do that. And I thank everyone for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that is a perfect segue. You know, why are these workers having to work so long? Is it because we're mostly women? Because we're mostly immigrants? Because we're mostly women of color? So I want to bring up Sonia Asario of the National Organization for Women. She's the president of the New York State chapter. Thank you so very much. Absolutely, this is a woman's issue first and foremost. And when we discriminate against women, like we are doing here with home health care workers who are taking care of our dear loved ones, we are putting our entire economy at risk and the health of all of our citizens and people. So it's important, you have to imagine what it would be like to head into work and be told that you must, you are forced to work a 24-hour shift. Imagine being the daughter of someone, of an elderly, sick parent, knowing that the person who's coming to relieve you to take care of your loved one is gonna work 24 hours with fatigue, with little sleep, and to boot, very little pay. This is a workers' rights abuse that must stop. And it's the reality of too many home health care workers. This isn't controversial. It certainly should not be controversial at all. Ending the forced 24-hour work shift is a workers' right issue that shouldn't need to be defended at this point in history. Safe working conditions, a reasonable work schedule, and fair pay are the basic workplace tenets that create a healthy, prosperous, and just society. We call on the, Nash, on the New York lawmakers to pass this critical legislation now. Thank you so much. Um, next we have up Assembly Member Joanne Simon. Thank you, thank you. Um, you know, we're standing here outside of the site of the former Triangle Shirtwaist Factory, which has such, it resonates so much in terms of our labor history and in terms of women's history. You know, the women who worked at the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory were locked inside and they worked unconscionable hours, uh, long hours, um, in an abusive situation. Today's Shirtwaist Factory workers are home health care workers because they are working 24-hour shifts and being paid for 13 hours. We have a term for that. It's involuntary servitude. Yeah. And that is unconscionable and unconstitutional. Yeah. Yeah. So I am delighted and very grateful to my colleagues, Senator Roxanne Prasad and Assemblymember Harvey Epstein and all of my colleagues here and the advocates I've been working with for the past several years on this issue to ban the 24-hour workday. Yeah. This is America. This is New York State. What are we doing? So I encourage everybody to speak up and speak out and make sure that we pass this bill so that we bring this kind of protection to our workers. Thank you very much. Today it is time to end the sweatshop, whether it's in a factory, whether it's in the office, whether it's in our homes. 24 hours working, no way! Next we have up Senator Myrie. Good morning. Good morning. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Josong. Josong. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Okay. All right. Ni hao. Yeah, that's, that's very good. Very good. I'm State Senator Zell Normari. Let me first thank Senator Prasad, Assembly Member Epstein, for sponsoring this legislation. I stand before you today not just as a state senator, but as a son of a home health aide. My mom is a home health aide right now. And so this is a personal issue for me uh, because we know that most people in this industry are women and most of them are women of color. And I would venture to say that if it were a different population, no one would stand for this. So we are gonna say today, today, no more to the 24 hour workshop. It is an injustice and we will not stand for it here in the state of New York. So I look forward to working with my colleagues to ensure that we pass this bill next session. Thank you to all of the advocates and the community people. Let's go get it done. Thank you. Thank you so much. And
That's exactly correct. You know, I want to mention for a moment, all of the home care workers out here, are we victims? No! no. Does the system run without us? No. no! Okay, the system needs us, and we deserve our fair share. We deserve standard 12-hour workdays maximum, and we deserve fair treatment today. Yeah. People with disabilities, people with chronic health conditions, older individuals are more and more wanting to come out of the institutions and live in their homes. One of our sponsoring organizations is the Disability Education and Advocacy Network of Western New York. We've got home care workers here from as far as, far as Niagara Falls, statewide issue for workers, for people with disabilities, and together we will win! I would like to invite up Assemblymember Sabotas. Thank you so much. Thank you, Harvey. Thank you, Senator Pertuan. You know, she had this bill when she was in the Assembly. My name is Arabella Samotas. I represent Northwest Queens, uh, Astoria, Long Island City, and I can tell you that this issue is very personal to me. I have a father who pretty soon is going to need 24-hour care. And, I mean, I know what that's going to be like. Right now, we're able to, you know, through family, through my mother, we're able to provide the assistance. But when we're not able to do that anymore, we're going to have to hire somebody. And it's not fair to expect that somebody will work 24 hours a day without break, without even just compensation. Because if you're getting paid, maybe you can push yourself to work those 24 hours. But if you're not, you have no incentive. There's a sign here, and I don't speak Spanish, but I'm going to read it. Uh, 24 horas se trabajo. De, uh, and I think it says destro destroys families. And I'm sorry because my Spanish, I have not gone to Spanish since high school. But that's what it does. It destroys families, not just those caretakers, but also the families who depend on the services. I want the best care for my family members. And I know that the health care providers also want to do the same. We can't expect that to happen if they do not sleep, if they do not rest. It is common sense. Unfortunately, uh, you know, common sense is not so common all the time, but the truth is that we have to measure our humanity as a state by how we treat the most vulnerable around us. We need to get this done. We need to get this done next year. No excuses. Thank you very much, Harvey. Thank you. Victims, though, who are leading the way because we know long hours, even if it's worse for home care workers, is something that people of all industries are starting to face longer and longer hours. A century ago, people fought and died for the eight hour work week, I'm sorry, the eight hour work day, 40 hour work week. We're here to say we're not gonna settle for 24 hour work day, and we will lead the way to a more just future for all workers. Right. What do we want? Split shifts. When do we want them now? What do we want? Split shifts. When do we want them now? What do we want? Split shifts.